www.deciblets.com We love any format in which literature can release itself to the wider world. So the Birmingham Literature Festival felt like a, a much more appropriate title for the next 16 years of our life. Unlike um, some other slightly larger festivals, there isn't a writer in our programme whose work we have not read and loved, and that's why and how we programme. And for that reason, I hope we will get to be a bigger festival. We'll never be a gigantic festival because we want to be a festival where the people of programme can genuinely say that they love and admire the work of all the writers featured. Hi, I'm Satnam Sangera. I'm the author of Marriage Material, a novel, and you're watching me on desiblitz.com. We could, frankly, make more of an effort. But believe me, your entrepreneurial spirit would also be blunted if you had to spend 15 hours a day being patronised. You speak excellent English. <laughs> Having your name mutilated. Origin, is it? Mind if I call you Andy? <laughs> Dealing with people paying for Mars bars with £20 notes. Giving detailed directions to surly motorists who buy nothing in return. Dishing out copies of Asian Babes to shameless eight-year-olds. Being called Smelly Patty by people reeking of boo booze and weed. And dealing with seemingly endless chit-chat. I don't think there's a problem with uh, South Asian fiction at all. I mean, just look at the people who've won the Booker Prizes over the last 20 years, a lot of them have been South Asian or South Asian origin and even the Booker Prize this year has Jhumpa Lahiri who's American and I think Bengali and I just I do think uh, South Asians write about South Asian culture very well and quite often and quite at quite a high level I don't think we need to really worry about representation <laughs> I'm Imtiaz Darka and you're watching me on DesiBlitz.com. This poem I'm about to read, they'll say she must be from another country, is not really about another country but about not wanting to be put in a box, not wanting to, to have one label put on me. They say she must be from another country. When I can't comprehend why they're burning books or slashing paintings, when they can't bear to look at God's own nakedness, when they ban the film and gap the seats to stop the play, and I ask why, they just smile and say, she must be from another country. When I speak on the phone and the vowel sounds are off, when the consonants are hard and they should be soft, they'll catch on at once, they'll pin it down, they'll explain it right away to their own satisfaction, they'll cluck their tongues and say, she must be from another country. The moment I enjoy most is there's this white page and you know you have the germ of an idea, a line. I'm putting that first line down on the page. And very often it may be, you know, on a bus or at a railway station and you're using a paper napkin to write on and if you're not lucky you throw it away by mistake. But that line, the moment when a line comes which makes you feel, oh, I'm I want to write that down. That's a magic moment and then then the poem grows around it. Hi, my name is Daljit Nagra. You're watching me on desiblitz.com. This is a drunk Indian man coming home to his wife from the pub. It's payday and they're just going to do a bit of dancing in the house. So it's called Darling and Me. The barman's bell done dinging. So I phone the dimply missus, putting some gas on cooker, bonus pay I bringing. Downing drink, I giddly home for Pakiza record, to which we go go dango. For my roti to kitchen, she rumba. I tell her of poor Jimmy John. In apron, his girlfriend, she bring to pub, his plate of chicken pie and dry white potato. 
problems might be that um, publishers find it hard to access uh, an Asian audience. Um, and I'm not sure if they know always where to go because they, it, you know, they, they're kind of familiar with their uh, middle class audience and they, they know how to hit them with maximum efficiency. And trying to break into, say, Bangladeshi or Pakistani or uh, Indian Punjabi audiences, it, I think they find that hard. So there, there might be a discrepancy there where there might be an Asian audience uh, and with a will to want to go and watch, and there might be a white publisher with a will to get them, but they're not kind of matching up at the moment. I'm Kesra Shiraz, the author of this novel, Revolt, and you're watching DaisyBlitz.com. Distressed on her back, he asked, on her behalf, he asked, shall I take you home? Reaching down to pull her up onto his horse. Ali! Ali's hand tightened on a girl's arm as he faced his master. Trembling, Shireen turned a bewildered look at the other rider glaring at them from a distance and then pulled herself away, staring down in horror at the grassy stain soiling her favourite frock. His mouth an angry slit, Ali asked, Are you alright, princess? Shireen nodded, mouth a beguiling small pout and eyes, two shimmering blue gems. She liked this man. He had brought them food the other night and always called her Biari Shizadi. Satisfied that the girl was okay, Ali sped up the path to the village square and stealing a look. I've been very lucky over the years that I have uh, managed to write books, managed to read audiences across the world, get my work translated and in particular I'm really pleased that my work is being studied in universities and schools, particularly a story called A Pair of Jeans which has come out as a collection of stories this year. That's been studied in for 27 years in Germany as part of the literature syllabus. Similarly there's been a textbook on my work devoted to writers uh, writing on my novels, articles written by professors, which sort of pay homage to my writing of my three novels and, and my short story. I didn't expect any of that. Hi, I am Charon. For news, gossip and gapshap, check out daisyblitz.com. Sunset. The sun has set across the spreading fields. The sun has set in the shadow of the woods. The sun has set beyond the anger of the rain, which is yet to fall. Upon the hundreds and hundreds of bodies sprawled upon the sand, upon the severed leg, alone upon the seashore, the sun has set. Upon the broken wings of a quivering small bird, which does not know where to heap its loss and sorrow, and searches for a corner in a small cage where it can lurk. Within my tears, the sun has set. At dawn, they arrive with faltering words. The body has not been found. It is important to, and it's, it's, it's important to realize and understand that most of the poems uh, in South Asian languages, when they get translated, they go via English. They don't know how many if I'm writing, th writing poems in Tamil, and if it is going to be translated to Malayalam or to, to Hindi, it doesn't go straight from Tamil to Hindi or Tamil to Malayalam or Tamil to Telugu. It goes by English. Yeah. It shouldn't be the case. <laughs> but this is exactly the, the you know the impact impact of uh, British colonialism where. The, the cultural uh, communication uh, among the various languages of South Asia has been totally abrupt. So we had to, we had to communicate via a stranger. My name is Rosie Dastigay, author of A Small Fortune, and you're watching me on DesiBlitz.com. The neighborhood was mainly Pakistani, yet this fact did not make Harris feel at home. Home was the home counties where he had once lived with his wife and daughter. Now that chunk of his life was over. His real name was Harris, but upon arrival from Pakistan in the 70s, he had found that people balked at its pronunciation, recoiling from the long, flat vowel sound. So he had obligingly adopted the name Harris instead. After the celebrated tweed whose label was stitched inside a cap he had bought from the Scotch house on Piccadilly. It was stamped with the Royal British Crest, suggesting that Prince Philip owned one too, and Harris was convinced he had seen that very royal sporting something similar on a Christmas television program. 
I think there are, the, you know, the media is far greater than it was when I was <clears throat> a child. So there are many other distractions, and there's been a lot written and spoken about people's levels of children's levels of concentration being distracted by Facebook and reading everything online. But you know, you see a lot of kids reading on Kindles. I think people are reading a lot more different types of things, not just books. Um, so I don't, I don't see it as a problem necessarily. I think it's possibly, a, you know, it's a blip in our history, and I don't think books are going anywhere.